Hey everybody, it's Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. Welcome to my channel. Today I am back with six quick and easy fall decor DIYs that you can make for under $5 each. I'm excited to show you these DIYs. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around by subscribing. So like I said in the intro, I'm going to show you six fall decor DIYs you can make using all of these items here along with some basic craft supplies. These are the six items that I'm excited to share with you today. For the first project, you can use one of these leaf trays or a pumpkin tray and some tumbling tower blocks with some wood glue. Now I am obsessed with wood as I've said before, so I'm actually going to use regular Jenga blocks. I look for these games all the time at garage sales. And so what I'm doing here is I am taking 12 Jenga blocks. I have them stacked in pairs and I'm going to make the letters F, L, and L. So my F takes 12 blocks. Each of my L's take 10 blocks. Now, if you are using the Dollar Tree blocks, you'll just want to um, decide how many blocks you need to make the size letters you want. So here's all my pairs glued together with wood glue and then now gluing them end to end, I'm going to make my letters. I know we're doing fall decor items in this video, but I was also thinking that you could use these blocks or the Dollar Tree version to spell out any words using straight letter, straight line letters. So you could do H, M, and E, and then seasonally change out some item for the O. Now you could leave your letters, just the natural wood. I did want to cover up the word Jenga on the sides. So I did decide to give each of my letters a coat of Waverly chalk paint in the dark brown color truffle. I hadn't done a whole lot of decor with leaves, so I decided to grab this leaf tray. Here you can see I'm taking two tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, gluing them together like a sandwich, and doing the same to two more. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating a little stand for this tray so that the leaf will stand up. Here I'm gonna flip the tray over and just with a little hot glue, attach one of my block pairs at the bottom there and then glue the other pair right on top. It makes a nice little stand and here I'll show you how then the leaf can stand up. You could always spray paint or paint your leaf another color if you wanted or even use a pumpkin. I did take a little sandpaper and distress my wood letters and I just love how this turned out. I probably will spray paint my leaf. For the next project, I found these super cute ceramic pumpkin tea light holders and some battery powered tea lights. And I decided to use these candle holders that come in three different sizes. So the way I'm making my project right now, it is a little bit more than $5, but for each candle holder, it would cost three. The pumpkin, the candlestick, and well, I guess $2.50, the one of the battery powered candles. So I decided to go ahead and spray paint my three candle holders with just a flat gray rather than leaving them clear. And now using my E6000, I'm gluing one of them to the base of each of the pumpkins. If you don't want to use E6000, remember you can always use the Fix All Adhesive from Dollar Tree. Thank you. 
I wanted to dress these up just a little bit more since they are more on the neutral side. So I am adding a jute bow to each of my candlesticks right under the pumpkin. I'll also mention that I did find these pumpkin tea light holders in orange and also like a grayish blue. So if you want something a little less neutral, you can always go for one of the colored ones. Here I'm just showing you these little battery powered tea lights from Dollar Tree. And here's what they look like sitting on the shelf, three different heights. You could always use real tea lights in these as well if you want. My third project, I am going to use 13 paint stir sticks, one of these farmer's market calendars, some tumbling tower blocks, Mod Podge, and the paint of your choice. So here I'm showing you I have 11 of the one gallon paint sticks, so that would be 98 cents plus one extra. I am going to take a 12th and 13th stick and just hot glue them across the back. Now, going back, I probably would have done 12 sticks across just so you didn't see these ends of my cross pieces, but it didn't bother me so much that I wanted to go back and add another one. So I'm basically making a little pallet wood sign with these one gallon paint stir sticks. And I'm going to give it a coat of plaster and then white acrylic paint over that. Using this calendar, and I didn't realize this till after, you actually have two copies of this image. This one is on the inside of the cover and then there is another one for October. So just trimming it up a tiny little bit, I'm going to use some of my matte finish Mod Podge and attach this to the center of my paint stick sign. Now taking some more of my Dollar Tree Tumbling Tower blocks, I'm going to make, um, I call them some sticks, just going to glue them together with wood glue. I'm going to make two that are six long and two that are seven long. Just trying to measure how many I need to go around my sign. Once I have these wood glued together and they're dry, I'm going to paint them with my black Waverly chalk paint called ink. Then using my hot glue gun, once those are dry, I'm going to hot glue the shorter pieces on these sides, getting those as centered as I can and covering up where the paint sticks um, are off of the calendar image, if that makes sense. So um, you're just going to see the calendar image on the inside of the sticks. Here, like I said earlier, I should have just used 12 sticks um, so I wouldn't have these little pieces sticking out, but they were not very difficult to either cut off with scissors or a little miter saw. So if that bothers you, you can go ahead and cut those pieces away before you glue your two longer tumbling tower sticks across the top and the bottom. Now, the top and the bottom one then are going to be raised because as you can see, I'm hot gluing them to the top of the side sticks, if that makes sense. So you can cut tumbling tower blocks if you want this to fit perfectly um, flat against the paint sticks, but I kind of liked it. It gave it a little more 
3D effect to my sign. And here's how it turned out. I think it's so cute and simple. You could do this idea for $3 with any of the images from the calendar. This next project is really simple. I had three more of these $1 pumpkin decor from Dollar Tree, and I decided I wanted to put them all together to make a more substantial pumpkin. So here you can see removing the raffia bows and the stem from all three of my pumpkins. Those stems came out really easily. If there's any glue left, you can just pull that out. And then I'm going to turn those upside down. I did decide these looked too perfect, so I did take my hand sander and went around the edges to distress them. And then taking my Waverly Antique Wax, I'm just brushing some around those sanded edges, and then I'm going to rub the excess away. This antique wax doesn't work exactly the same on this pressed MDF board like it does on real wood, but I still really liked the way it turned out. So now going back to that first orange one, I'm just using a paper towel to kind of um, mute out that wax, and then I'm also rubbing in the center of the pumpkin just to kind of age that part as well. So I'll do this with all three of the pumpkins. Once all three of my pumpkins were dry, I put the two orange ones right next to each other, put some hot glue on the back of the white one, and centered it there to make more of a 3D pumpkin. Now, if you wanted to use all orange ones, you could do that. You could use three white ones. And I'm taking now one of these wood stems that I still have left in my package and gluing that to the top for the stem of my pumpkin. Next, I'm going to take one of the raffia bows that I took off of these pumpkins and glue it back here at the base of the stem. And then, you guessed it, this skinny black gingham ribbon. I have to make a tiny bow to go on top of the raffia bow. This time, I did leave the tails long. I just thought it looked really cute since there wasn't really a word or anything on the pumpkin. So that's all there is to it for this DIY. I hope you guys liked it. And here is what it looks like. These would be really cute, like if you made this one with two different colors, then made one with three orange pumpkins, one with three white pumpkins. Um, really, the possibilities are endless. For my next project, I'm using four hardcover books that I purchased at Dollar Tree. I really wanted to go with some neutral covers. I didn't want to wrap them in craft paper or even turn the covers around like I've seen some people do. So what I did is I just, with the closest paint color I had, is I just painted the spine so that I could still keep those pretty white, black, gray, and this I don't know what you'd call that green. It's just so pretty um, cover. So here, that's what I did. I just painted the spines and let those dry completely. Next, using some of these sticker letters from Dollar Tree, or you could even use a Sharpie or a paint marker. I decided the wording I wanted to use because I had four books. I've seen a lot of these stacks done with three. I wanted to use four. I did gather and give thanks. So I used a white and sign on the black book. And then here you can just see how I started at the right with the last letter of the word. And I'm just moving to the left. There were a couple of these stickers. I think one of these sheets was a little old that didn't stick super well, but I am going to Mod Podge over the letters to make sure they stay in place.
And here, like I said, I'm going to Mod Podge, oop, make sure you don't brush the letters away, um, Mod Podge over the stickers, and then I will end up spreading the Mod Podge along the entire spine just so the finish looks uniform. But I know there are so many different sayings you can put on these book stacks. This is actually my first book stack. I've thought about making one for a long time and this fall was just the time to do it. So I really liked this saying. I came up with two of my favorite wordings for the fall gather and give thanks. So the only burlap right I had right now was this really wide six inch ribbon. So I'm just trying to cut a piece that will wrap entirely around. Um, as I started gluing it though, I realized it was too wide. I didn't like that it was covering up so much of the cover of the books. So once I get it hot glued around, you're going to see after I actually trim about half an inch off each side and then fray it by pulling out a few strands. I think this was the hardest DIY I did just because of trying to keep those books, <laughs> that stack of books uh, straight and flat while I was trying to glue the burlap. So like I said, here you can see how I took some of the width of the ribbon away and then frayed some of the sides. I really loved how this turned out. This next project, I'm reusing a couple of my pumpkin signs from last year using one of these little napkin holders, I guess, and one of these small pumpkins. This is the what I'm using, the Hello Fall and the Welcome Friends. So I had painted these last year and had them out on my porch, so I'm just removing the burlap bows and I am going to take the stand off of that white one. I will take my scraper here and after I remove, I decided to use this one that had the little cutouts and then that smallest ornament one that I had already painted orange and then didn't use. So these bottom two, they did still have a little bit of glitter on them, not a problem. I just took my scraper and took a couple minutes to get the rest of that off. Kind of like my book stack, I decided to do neutral pumpkins and then of course the orange one and then I have this other pop of color I'm going to use. This bottom one, I'm using Waverly Chalk Paint in Hazelnut. It's kind of like a taupe type of color and remember this pumpkin does still have the stand on the bottom. This next color is actually a Martha Stewart paint that I got at a thrift store. It looks very similar to Waverly Chalk Paint's color Agave. It's like a darker teal. Also, I just have to give a shout out here to Caitlin from Crafts by Caitlin. She introduced me to these wide brushes and I absolutely love them. They cover so quickly. I found mine in a two pack at Walmart for $4.97, I believe. All right, so this third pumpkin, I'm just giving a coat of white acrylic paint from Michaels. And then that fourth one on the top is already painted orange. I believe it's Anita's acrylic paint in the color pumpkin. Next, I wanted to give my pumpkins some dimension. So using my truffle chalk paint and this very flat paintbrush, I'm just softly drawing like the bumps or the lines on the pumpkins. And then I'm going to dry brush a little bit more around them to make them look more rustic and realistic.
And after doing that same thing with the other three pumpkins and letting them dry, I'm going to hot glue them together, not in a perfectly straight line, but a little bit like left, right, left, to make them look maybe like they're getting ready to fall over. So the hazelnut on the bottom, the Martha Stewart Lagoon next, and then white, and then the pumpkin orange at the top. And then I am taking the stand from that second pumpkin and just gluing it to the back of the other stand just because this is tall and then that way it will be a little more sturdy to stand. For this bow, I decided to use my thinner jute from Dollar Tree and just make it a few strands thick and cut a bow. And I'm going to glue this to the top of my orange pumpkin right at the stem there. And then of course, add one more tiny bow with my black gingham. So here's my stacked pumpkins. You could very easily add words to each of these pumpkins as well, but I just love how it turned out with that pop of color. Here's one more final look at the six projects we made today. Like I said, these can be made for under $5 each using items that you can find pretty easily, I think, or modify with items that you either have in your stash or can find at your store. Thanks so much again for joining me today on my channel. I loved bringing you these six projects. I really want to know in the comments, like I always ask, which one is your favorite, which ones you plan on making yourself. Again, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy quick, easy projects that you can make with easy to find items from Dollar Tree, Walmart, and maybe some other craft stores. Again, if you're new here, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. See you next time. Bye.